They're oh, getting for... a little bit loose. 45 minutes of truck racing on the track. Nice start. Look at that freight train. It's like a chain link fence going around the, or a chain. Incredibly clean start. No one making any mistakes and no contact. Getting all the way to the front straightaway. No mistakes. And Mayfield trying to get away early. It's going to be interesting because you know Tessman's going to want to get around Rivkin. And it's going to be interesting, too, with and Mayfield. not let Mayfield take off. Mayfield and Rivkin on the same tires. Tessman's not. He's so, on blockades. Right. So his truck may come in faster. It might last longer. It could be, you know, it's they're not going to wear and have the same amount of grips at all point throughout the race. So it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers on the different tire teams are going to shake out here in early stages of this one. Tessman doesn't quite make that step off, but he recovers well, does it? He's still right there behind Rivkin. It's Mayfield. Mayfield, Rivkin, Tessman, Tebow, I believe, the top four. Mayfield, Rivkin, Tessman, Tebow. Mayfield trying to get away. Rivkin's got a rearview mirror full of Ty Tessman. Tebow trying to get around. He knows, or Tessman, excuse me, wants to get by Rivkin and not let Mayfield get away. If Ryan's able to coast out front, get comfortable and not have to worry about having pressure he could turn this one into a snoozer but Rivkin's making that RC8 T3 uh, about six feet wide Rivkin just out of I'm sorry Mayfield just out of frame you see Tessman a little out of shape entering the switchback that's going to give Rivkin a couple feet of breathing room jumping up the hill you see how shiny it is up there with the sunshine coming in through the back side of this roof Rivkin up on two tires, bikes up, coming through the front uh, front straightaway. Able to get back on the power. Tessman uh, not yet in striking distance. He fell back a little bit there on the left side of the track. And now Rivkin uh, starting to settle down into a little bit of a groove. Doesn't have to worry about playing the block pass. Ryan Mayfield out in front right now. He's got a 1.8 second lead. Mayfield's got that corner. Of the go oh, Rivkin hits the pipe. Tessman trying to capitalize and tries to jump to the inside of him, and he makes the pass. Got it. Got it. Wow, that was clean too. No, no rough driving there at all. Now let's see if Tessman can leave Rivkin behind and start reeling in Mayfield. He was two seconds behind at the line. Rivkin with a little more turn in than Tessman right there. Rivkin on a reflex, Tessman on blockades. I think Tebow's Ooh. on hole shots. And Oh, wow. And T, uh, sorry, Tessman touching the pipe there, going in through the magnet and had to back off. Over. Tessman so good on that left side triple, able to land right on the inside pipe, and that's given him an advantage coming down the front straightaway over Rivkin. And you can see these trucks sliding around the corners. It's such a heavy shine on the track and polish. You don't want to go upside down because the marshals are afraid of slipping, especially if you're in a berm turn, and they just are basically gingerly going to the cars. Let's see if anybody could catch Ryan Mayfield out here in Hutto, Texas at the Roar Off-Road National Championships. Mayfield, your leader, Tessman second, Rivkin third, Tebow fourth, Dakota Fend fifth. We're going to have a team-associated instant replay here. This is what happened with Rivkin. He turned it, the car turned in a little bit early. Caught the pipe, and then Tessman right behind him through the step-off jump. Rivkin came up a little bit short and already had to go wide, and Tessman had him squared up move. to get to the inside. <laughs> what a move. So through the magnet turn, following along with Oh, Rivkin, Rivkin gets Tessman. around Tessman and Tebow yeah. right there as well. Getting a little bit of breathing room now. Tessman's been really aggressive in that magnet turn, and it's almost reached out to bite him a couple of times. Rivkin able to get by him on the right side of the track as we were checking out that instant replay. And Tebow in a really good spot right now can follow these guys. And frankly, uh, he may be a little concerned about Mayfield getting away. Yeah, but he, I, I would be. He's in a good spot to uh, potentially move into the second position if Rifkin and Tessman get together. Mayfield with a 30.021 is fast lap. He's two tenths faster than anybody else out there on the track right now. Whoa, and top, uh, sorry, second and third get together coming on the front straightaway just as we were talking about. Rifkin able to move back to the second spot, getting around Tessman. And Tebow, unfortunately, not able to capitalize. But all it's going to take is one of these two to, uh, you know, bobble and slide into the racing line. And that's going to allow Tebow to move by them both. 
I'm not up there driving, but it sure looks like it's like, uh uh-oh, I'm sliding in the corner. I got some drive. My front wheel's actually gripped. I got a little more steering, but I'm waiting for you to get out of the way. It goes vice versa. It goes back and forth both ways. We're talking about the top drivers in the world right here we're watching. By no meaning do they take each other out on purpose or anything like that. We have five down. Well, actually, 5.10 down, 39.50 to go. This is the Truggy A main event. We're going to go 15th spot right now is Denny. Hart's in 14th. Alex K is 13th. 12th is Fisher. Drake 11th. Ripped and rolling it over. Tessman getting to the inside in the magnet corner. We saw a tie jump into the corner there. And that's where he's been really aggressive so far. Ripken already with the mistake. And Tessman had put himself in the perfect spot. Mayfield already 4.4 seconds out on that uh, trio of trucks there for second, third, and fourth. Yeah, we're not even going to need to pay attention to the leader at this point. The great battle is what's going on immediately behind him. Tebow and Ripken swapping positions. Tebow just waiting patiently. We've talked to Tebow uh, many times throughout the week. He said he didn't feel like his truck quite had the speed to be able to maybe drive in on these guys. But if he can just be right there, they make a mistake. He feels very comfortable driving at this pace. He just doesn't know that he can get in there and mix it up and drive just as hard as they can. Ryan Lutz in the fifth spot, Joe Bornhorst six, Ryan Cavalieri seventh, Mike Truey's in eighth, Tanner Steve's ninth. We're going to have a team associated, team associated instant replay coming to you right here. So and listen, this is back in the magnet turn. You see Rivkin a little too early, hits the pipe and landed on his wheels, but not until Tessman got to the inside. We'll have a little track fact for you right after this race, explaining why that happens in that corner. It's a really difficult spot of the track, really far from the driver's stand, so you're already lacking perspective, and then the track surface is just really difficult. Mayfield now 5.2 out. We are going to see a round of pit stops coming up here probably within two laps. It's going to be around the 7.30 mark. Can't imagine anyone's going to try to go nine. Not with the wheel spin that they're having here. Yeah, even in the truck class, it's just too close for comfort. We saw some people running out in the seven-minute practice session, so... May get one or two. Oh, Rivkin has to check up wow. right there, man. He gets lucky. Tessman left the door open a little bit at the top of the hill. Rivkin thought about it, but Very. it was a wise idea to back off and not cause a collision. Very kind of Spencer Rivkin because he really had the drive to clear that, no problem. Yeah, that's maybe something you pull off at the 44-minute mark, not at the 7-minute mark. That's driving wise beyond his years. You see Rivkin abruptly tapping the brakes at the top of that third jump to keep that RC8 T3 on the ground. Mayfield Ooh. into pit lane at the 728 mark. Mayfield into pit on your right-hand side. Everybody, Tebow stays out. Rivkin in. Oh, Ty Tessman flames out. Ty oh, Tessman no. flames out in pit lane. No good. Cavalieri's in. He gets restarted, and he is out. So now you got Tebow all over Mayfield, but Tebow still has to pit. So we kind of figured this might happen. Tessman uh, using that little bit of fuel advantage. He's had really good fuel mileage at other races in the past, and he might just be staying out one extra lap so the pit lane's not busy when he ducks in. Tebow? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Tebow. All time. <laughs> We're on track with Ty Tessman drops all the way to fifth. That's not bad for flaming out. No. <laughs> Anything can happen. Engine temperature is really high. We know some of the top couple guys were dealing with engine temperatures, so that could come into play here later. There's really no cooling going to happen with this kind of humidity. It's not going to, you know, like all of a sudden, oh, it was running hot at first. I could tell, and then it got better. That's not going to happen out here, I don't think, anyway. Tebow on the right side of the track still has not yet pitted for his first time. Eight minutes and 40 seconds. You know, He's on the nine-minute stop, nine or ten. Yeah, re, uh, switching over to that MX engines and fuel. And maybe that's the advantage he's looking for. If he if he wasn't confident that he could simply outpace someone on the track, maybe he's going to try to do it in pit lane with one fewer stop. He's 1.4 seconds behind uh, Mayfield last time by the line. Of course, Mayfield's already pitted. Here he comes. And here comes nine minutes. nine minutes. Good stop. Bam, bam. Joe Pillar's there. His fuel catcher was right there. Boom, and he's out. Here comes the rest of the field, though. So he's going to get out right in front of Truy. it looked like. Truy though, is a lap down at this point. He is. He goes wide, so he gets out right in front of Lutz. So it's Mayfield, Tebow, Rivkin, Lutz at the moment. It's going to probably go Mayfield, Rivkin, Tebow, Lutz, Tessman. That'll be your running order. Once that pit stop cycle through with Jared making that uh, late race stop. Takes him out, but then waits. That always kills you, even though he waited. Yep. That's a tough corner right there. 
There, so they're going to lose ground to Spencer Rifkin. It was already 3.7 seconds. Some of the drivers are already going a lap down at the first pit stop. Mayfield is on a blistering run right now. His fast lap, a 29.820. We didn't see hardly any 29-second lap times in qualifying either. Nope. A 29.749 for Lutz. Yeah, Lutz just two Here laps comes your to go with the fastest lap of the race. Team associated instant replay. This is what happened with Lutz and Tebow. It's dropping, a couple of laps ago. Dropping down the hill. Tebow jumping to the inside of the turn. Lutz was already in the air. Really had nowhere to go. That was uh, that was a tough one. Yeah, that was just a matter of converging lines. Uh, you know, Tebow was trying to sweep to the inside. Really, Tebow probably should have uh, given the the car. How do room. you? You're landing. Right. right. You're already you're committed but, by the time you come off the face of the double. Yeah. You know, Lutz. Interesting enough, Lutz has impacts on the front and whole and gridirons on the back. Trying to get a little extra drive out of the car. Oh this yeah. Time. Yeah, Tebow uh, did go wider coming onto the straightaway, and Lutz had him already set up. Tebow a little out of set up. Tebow a little out of shape there in that back right corner, but Lutz was already committed to that inside line, and so when Tebow pushed out wide, he was able to drive right on by. Mayfield's out front with a 4.5-second lead over Rivkin. Rivkin's got 4.9 seconds over Lutz. Lutz is 10 seconds back from Mayfield at the moment. Tebow less than a second behind Lutz, as you can see right there. They've got Truy in the middle of him. Tebow hits that pipe right there. I think Ryan Mayfield has that corner nailed more than anybody yep. up there in that corner. He seems really comfortable up there. Uh, those tires are doing a great job of gripping on the slick surface as we see uh, Mayfield navigating through traffic, going through the double single. And Lutz with Truy in between himself and Tebow, potentially uh, able to put a little bit of a, a gap there between those two drivers. It was 1.3 at the line last time by. But from Mayfield to Rivkin, 4.4 seconds. It was five seconds from Rivkin to Lutz last lap, and then 1.3 back to Tebow. And look at your leader on track right here with Ryan Mayfield. He is on fire out here. Truck hooked up, working good. Drake goes way out of the way. Ryan Mayfield, Team Losi Racing, Reds Racing Power, J Concepts Tires, Sidewinder Fuel, Ryan Mayfield out in front, comes across right here, 30.065, his lap before that 30.2, then a 30.1, 30.6, 30.1, man, look at that, his pit lap was only 5 seconds, it was at 36.055. Last year, Ty Tessman tied Ryan Mayfield with three national championships in the 8th scale truck class, and Mayfield trying to get that record right back. He's on a record run then, Ryan yep. Mayfield. TQing three rounds of the four in qualifying here in truck. Took the fourth round to test some tires for the main event. Was already very happy with how his truck was going to handle and what he felt would be a good choice for this 45-minute main. Yep. And, you know, coming up on uh, the uh, one-third of the way through mark, and it's proven just fine right now. He's out front by 4.4 seconds going away. And they're on a 7.30 pit window. Tebow's the only one on a long pit window. He's in fourth at the moment. And I'm, I'm wondering if Jared Tebow did go to the whole shot tire, which they opted to use in qualifying because there was more grip with that right. tire. So I'm wondering if that's kind of his strategy. Less wheel spin, you know, might get some mi better mileage. That or he's just getting phenomenal mileage. Yeah, I'm wondering, though, too, if uh, Jared went for those tires hoping that maybe his car would be a little bit faster at the beginning of the race. And if that's the case, that's true. You know, when are those tires going to wear out if they are? Um, you know, is he going to get good traction once they, you know, start wearing down quite a bit? We might see Jared, you know, start sliding back as the race goes on. There's Rivkin. He's in second spot. That's who we're on track with. He's trying to get around Adam Drake right there. And Drake gets a little bit sideways. Oh. Rivkin gets into him. Rivkin, actually, that didn't slow him down a whole lot. No. Maybe just a tenth or something like that or two. Got Spencer lucky Rivkin showing his ability out here. He's the youngest driver up there, isn't he? I think so. I think he's. I think he's got a great attitude. Tanner sees is the youngest. Not sure. Um, he's got a great attitude. His dad says he loves racing a nitro class. Uh, he's still really excited to be here. And, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen later on in this race, but Rivkin gets around Steve's right there. How many is there? Four Arizona drivers in this one? Yep. This is a Phoenix reunion. <laughs> what are they putting the water at the Fear Farm? Something. Mayfield, Rivkin, Lutz, your top three. Tebow's fourth, Tessman fifth after a flameout. Cavalier East sixth, Bowen Horse seventh, Dakota Fend eighth, Tanner Steve's ninth. We're on track with Ty Tessman right there. It's going to be Fisher tenth. Oh, Fisher's in. That's five Arizonans. Hartson. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, wow, that's crazy. Hartson's in the 11th spot, Truy 12th, 6th. Truy lives in Arizona now, too. That's crazy. Yeah, that's true. Arizona Alex K, 13th, and Drake and Tanner Denny might be off the track. Tessman 
currently running in the fifth spot after that uh, unfortunate flame out. Last time by the line, he was two and a half seconds behind Ryan Lutz. And with getting through traffic here on this lap, hopefully it, for him, I'm sure, uh, wants to put in some good laps and see if he can start trying to reel in Lutz and Tebow and make a bid for another podium finish with a half hour left. Bornhorst in and out of the pit. He's on the 730 pit window. We're going to start seeing guys coming in and out of pit lane right now. Bornhorst came in. And someone's out of gas. Oh, and the guy standing in pit lane. That was Billy Fisher. They barely got around him. Truy into pit. Oh, and he flamed out again. Something going on with Tessman struck. Second flame out for him. Now he's not going to be happy with that. That never happens to Ty. Cavalieri in and out. Maybe a plug going bad. It's got to be something that, you know, out of the ordinary because Ty's usually got that engine program on lock. Unless he's that close to out, but it wouldn't have started that quick. No. No, maybe low idle, bad plug, something. I don't know. That's it. Oh, and he, wow, he gets lucky, gets there. I think Bornhorse was upside down right there. Yep. So two flameouts for Ty Testament. He's still in, he's going to be in sixth spot now. Cavalieri inherits fifth. Bornhorse seventh, uh, Fend eighth. But it's still your leader, Ryan Mayfield, with the 4.4 second lead over Rivkin. Rivkin starting to get a little bit faster here. 29.868 his last lap. That's his fastest lap of the race. Or that's his fast lap. Sorry about that. We're on track with Team Associated, MX Engine Racing Driver there, Ryan Cavalieri. He's currently in the fifth position. He went out on gridirons from what I could see. Cavalieri's last lap was a 30.999. Rivkin's last lap at 29.730. Now he's got a 3.5 second. He's behind Mayfield 3.5 seconds. So Rip Rivkin's truck seems to be getting a little bit better here as we're almost halfway down. Well, eh, we're 12 minutes away from that. I apologize. Rivkin's <laughs> last lap was the fastest of the race at a 29.730. He cut a half second off of Mayfield's lead. One, it was just a bad lap for Mayfield, but Rivkin there, a 30.3. So his last lap, a 30.3. The lap before that, a 29.730. He got a 30 flat with a 9, a 34.4. If that was his pit lap, 4.4. That's where he's making up some time. And let's see what Mayfield's pit lap was. It was a 35.5. So about one second. That's where we gained that second right there. We're talking NASCAR stuff now. Let's see what on. he's got this time by losing another two tenths of a second. So it seems like where Ripken's able to rip off a really quick cool inches away a little bit. Rivkin in some traffic. Not sure where Mayfield's at on the track at the moment. Looks like he just went over the triple. Yes, he did. So there's Mayfield asking you. That's shall your receive. leader. <laughs> and then you see Rivkin jumping over the short table right there, over the double. So. Mayfield, your leader, with 26 minutes and 45 minutes, 26.45 remaining. His last lap at 30.4, 30.2 for Rivkin, 31.2 for Tebow, 30.7 for Lutz. Uh, Cavalieri's last lap at 30.3, 30.3 for Tessman. Bornhorst, 32.2, 31.1 for Dakota Fenn. And the, let's see. 12th you, place driver Alex K just flamed out, we heard, from pit lane. Oh, man. Uh, I'm sure he's just stoked to be in the final. Ryan Mayfield dominated qualifying out here, out in front right now. And, you know, I was out there during the warm-ups, and everybody's truck just making a ton of horsepower, it sounds like. I mean, and his truck specifically just sounded fantastic. Well, that humidity is going to make the air thicker, which means they can, you know, get Pony more fuel in that engine and make more power. So, yeah, it's, uh, even though it's a little bit warm outside, these engines are breathing easy. Mayfield, I love the way he's throwing a little bit of style over that triple on the left-hand side every time you see him wiggle the wheel just as he leaves the lip. Oh, nice. It. Did you see that? <laughs> just whipped it around there, wheelie. That, there's more of a lip on that than you could see, actually. Yeah.
orange and blue coming out of the doubles. Four. Like the buggy final did in uh, Vegas a couple months ago with Mayfield and Rifkin out front. Rifkin sort of you know, growing up in his racing career, obviously I'm sure that. And he's chopping at his lead right now. It's only 2.4 seconds. And you know Mayfield sees him coming in to play there. Yeah, you have to imagine uh, Mayfield is going through a lot of emotions to watch his protege win a world championship. Uh, last year in Japan after Mayfield's come close so many times. Uh, How hard would that be, being Ryan Mayfield and the caliber of driver that you are, and you are someone's fiercest competitor sure. on the track you've mentored somebody and you and you are also now it's this other dynamic of your racing against each other that takes a lot of maturity and a lot of character to truly be happy for them i mean you got to get yeah. over yourself immediately well, and, the, and be there for them as their friend you know i mean be there for them as their friend you know i mean that's incredible well and he was and mayfield was the first person to go up on the driver's stand to spencer and give him a big hug and yeah. tell him just how great of an accomplishment that was and how proud of him he was uh, but you have to imagine that ignited a flame in Mayfield because since then it seems like he's been absolutely nearly unstoppable especially at these nitro races and you got to have to imagine that Mayfield especially two years ago in Italy uh, had such an incredible run in qualifying at the Worlds you know in this race uh, coming up in Vegas later this year uh, Mayfield's going to be on a serious mission and look at this. Mayfield's got traffic in front of him. And here comes Rivkin. He's got Hartson right in front of him. Mayfield on your left, Rivkin on your right. They're almost together on the track. Only 1.5 seconds separates them. So Mayfield now behind him, in front of him. I can't see who that is. The last seven laps in a row, Rivkin's been faster. Look and at these laps, 29-3, and here he comes. We've He's been reeling him in like crazy at the moment. Well, I talked about how it seemed like Rifkin would cut off a big chunk and then Mayfield would inch back away a little bit further, a little bit further. Mayfield in the pit. It's been the opposite. Rifkin's cut off tents here and there and here and Rifkin there. Rifkin in the pit right behind him, and he had, uh-oh, I hope. Wow, yeah. A little mistake in pit lane. I almost thought, man, he could have flamed him out the way he grabbed him there. No kidding. That so that's going to give Ryan Mayfield that cushion back that he had. They're probably about a three-second cushion again. It'll be interesting to see if Rifkin uh, can get those nerves back, calm down, and go back to inching closer and closer a little bit here and there. Unfortunately, he's got some traffic between him and Mayfield. Ryan getting out at just the right time. Now he's got Truy and Steez uh, stacked up between himself and uh, Rivkin, St uh, Truy and Steez battling for the 10th spot, so you know, they're still trying to mix up their own position there. All four of those guys race together in Arizona. Yeah. Mayfield down the short shoot, has a bunch of open track ahead now. His, his truck, sorry Aaron. His pit lap at 35.8. Let's see what his uh, first lap after the pit stop is. Spencer Rivkin's pit lap was a 36-3, where he made up a second the previous pits. He lost it this time. Yeah, lost a half a second on that pit stop. Two there. seconds slower than his previous pit stop. There's Mayfield by the line, 30.2, 30.4. So Mayfield stretching out another couple of tenths on this lap, the gap up to 23.3. You notice they just pitted. There's a lot more smoke coming out of Mayfield's truck right now than there was. I see it on every, every acceleration. There's just a big puff of smoke coming out. Wonder if it gets leaner then as he's getting closer to the pit stop. I don't know, and they're coming around to lap Ty Tessman in the fifth spot. Wow. They are just gone. Checking out Ryan Mayfield and Spencer Rivkin right here. We are at 20 minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the Nitro. Nitro, of course it's Nitro. It's the Nitro Nationals. <laughs> yep. And it is the Truggy Division. Your leader, Ryan Mayfield, he's led from the tone so far. Rivkin 1.8 seconds back. They have a 10-second lead on, actually about a 12-second lead on Lutz. Tebow is fourth, Cavalry fifth, Ty Tessman sixth, Dakota Fenn seventh, Bornhorst eighth, Hartson ninth, and Truey tenth. Then Steez, Fisher, Alex K, Drake, and Denny round out the running order. Denny's the only one actually off the track with 20 minutes left to go. Mayfield at this point just counting down the laps. <laughs> he is doing a fantastic job of just calm cool collected ryan mayfield out in front they're about to put fifth position a lap down and there's rivkin not far behind him 1.5 back he's got him in his sights team zebco in full effect <laughs> yeah just letting the leader take out a little bit of line and then he's going to pull him back a little bit here's Go interesting ahead. to see uh, if Rivkin's saving something or if he's driving uh, all out right now just trying to stay close. 
What's going through Rivkin's mind if he's just chopping away that lead time after lap after lap? He sees him getting closer and closer. Here we go. We got some battle coming for the lead with 19.15 to go. Rivkin was way faster on the right side of the track, and that's allowed him to catch up to Mayfield. Mayfield's truck looking a little more comfortable here on the left side. Gets a good run coming onto the straightaway. Just six tenths of a second apart at the finish line with traffic ahead. They've got Tessman right there in front of that. Well, no, a few corners in front of this, not a whole bunch. I will retract that statement. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, man, nice save. Ripken's done that a few times. In the right-hand portion of that little switchback section, and it's it might be a little bit faster when he can nail it, but it's uh, making him tap the pipe going into that magnet turn a couple of times, and that's allowing Mayfield, those little mistakes is where Mayfield's able to capitalize and get away. This goes two ways. When you're Ryan Mayfield and you see somebody catching you like that and reeling you in, it takes a lot of maturity. Doing the thing you've been doing right. and not focus on that car catching you. And second of all, with in respect to Rivkin, you're catching him, you're catching him, you're catching him, but there's a lot of race left. You make one sure. mistake, and you can't throw it away right then and there because there's a lot of racing left to do. You'll hear these guys say all the time, it's harder to make up time than it is to give it away. And so yes. when you're trying to pick up the oh, time, man. wow, may feel a little wide coming down that hill and Rivkin right on him. It's harder to minimize those mistakes and Mayfield's starting to make a couple of mistakes Rivkin's right on his rear wing 17 45 left to go let's get it done he's been very kind the last couple of corners he had an opportunity to maybe bump him there he's making sure he didn't though so we see some fantastic respectful racing going on right now 27 30 they'll be coming up on pit stops in about two and a half minutes or so uh, let's see if Rivkin's going to force the issue here or if he's got his uh, associated teammates downstairs telling him just stay close you've still got a lot of time left no reason to force the issue now unless Mayfield makes a mistake it's getting exciting here towards the end of the race this is what you want to see you want to see some guys battling out for the lead here but there's a lot of racing left to go anything can happen we saw a slight mistake uh, in pit lane last time with the grab on uh, Riv for Rivkin that let Ryan or Ryan Mayfield get out of there with a little bit of breathing room. I think what had happened is that I think Rivkin's tire tapped Mayfield going into pit lane. It spun his truck sideways. Very possible. Yeah, yep. so Saxton did all he could. He just grabbed the car by both sides and luckily didn't cover the pipe stinger. That's what those gloves are for. Mayfield's car so good through the left side of the track. It looks like Rivkin able to carry a little bit more speed through the right side, especially He's able to attack with more pace. He is so tight on those berms. Yeah. Look at that. You see, especially the right-hand turn before the center double. It lifts up the inside rear tire, and the truck just pivots. Now Tessman uh, with the leaders nice right behind him. Nice move from Ty, Ty Tessman right there, letting him go. Yeah, in the sketchiest corner on the track, yep. but had to get out of the way quickly. Uh, a couple more trucks ahead, and that's where Rivkin's been so fast. I'm wondering if they nailed something in that last round, and then also... Spencer Rivkin's dad, after the semifinal warm-ups, uh, he had this big smile on his face, and he goes, now we're there. Yep. And it was after the buggy one, and they said, Dino Dan said, now you've got a race car. So I'm wondering if they, uh -huh. they got something going, and uh-oh, what was that? Well, that, that was, was a back, a car, woo! Yeah. They both got through there, no problem. That's interesting how Mayfield, almost every lap is better at the beginning of the straightaway, and then Spencer's faster here. So it's been an ebb and flow. It was uh, about seven tenths of a second last time by. They had nearly identical laps. It's all up to minimizing mistakes at this point. They're nearly identical on lap times. Awesome. They're both just reeling off the 29s. They're probably causing each other to go a little bit faster. Sometimes you see this happen, and they start going slower. But this is a very demanding race. Uh, May oh, Spencer Rivkin in. Mayfield stays out. First time they haven't pitted on the same lap. Interesting. And Rivkin out. Mayfield opting to stay out one more lap. That was Rivkin pitting right at 30 minutes, so no reason to believe Mayfield won't be able to make it one more lap, but interesting that they weren't on the exact same schedule. Maybe that was something that the TLR guys did on purpose to keep Mayfield out one more time so there wasn't another pit lane mix-up. And there is Mayfield right there. He should be coming in to pit this lap, and, and he, he is, and he comes in. 
Very clean. Jumps up in there. They grab him. John Pyant, Kevin Gahan filling him up. Boom, and he's out. And here comes Rivkin right there. So, actually, I think that's Tebow in between them. So Mayfield with a little bit faster pit stop there. He made there. up time. Yeah, it was a 35-585 for Rifkin's lap. We'll see what Mayfield's is. Solid pit stop. Uh, the J Concepts team manager and the TLR team manager working together to take care of their boy. It is Rivkin. He got around Tebow. So Rivkin about three seconds behind uh, Mayfield right now. Not sure if Rivkin made it around that corner. Looked like he might not have. Wow. One nope, 1.6. 1. 1. Sorry. 1.8 seconds faster pit lap for, for Mayfield, Mayfield over Rivkin. Nice. That could be a race winning yep. stop right there. It could come down to about one second at the end of the race. They're going to be working their way through traffic and at separate times. They're not going to pull over for both of them at the same time. So that could come into play as well. Born Horse. Oh! He has to hit the brakes. Yep. He's going to have Rivkin right behind him now. All it takes and Rivkin taps the pipe right there. That gives Mayfield a little bit more breathing room. It was 1.7. Now it's 1.4. So Rivkin a little bit faster than that last lap. Huh. But what would it have been if he didn't have to check up there at the top of the hill? Rivkin's going to have to cut out those Ooh. little mistakes because Mayfield's not going to be giving up big chunks of time here. 13-15 left to go. Man, it's been an awesome race. We'll go through the, the, the order real fast. It's Mayfield, Rivkin, Lutcher, top three, Tessman, fourth, Tebow, fifth, Cavalieri, sixth, Dakota, Fenn, seventh, Joe Bornhorf is eighth, Hartson, ninth, Truey, tenth, Tanner sees eleventh, Fisher, twelfth, uh, Kosciusek is thirteenth, Drake is fourteenth, and Tanner Denny is off the track, or is he back on? No, he's off the track at, what, lap seven? Ty Tessman had spun he might be back on. sideways, entering into pit lane down the four spot. He was already 18.3 seconds behind Ryan Lutz, so... That's going to give Lutz another uh, few feet, really, and that few feet, really, and that what could have shaped up as a battle for fourth there because I think Lutz has to pit one more time than what Tessman might have been doing uh, with those two uh, flameouts. So Ryan Lutz could be looking at another podium finish here at the Roar Nationals for the Techno RC team. Can Rivkin catch Ryan Mayfield again? We shall see. Ryan Mayfield, his last lap was a 29.8, 29.9 the lap before that, 30.1, 34.5 was his pit lap. Flawless. Yeah. 30.7 the lap before that, then a 29.9, 30.2, and a 29.7 on lap 57. The fact five on lap 53 from Spencer Rivkin in the second spot. Yeah, so the top two drivers still going incredibly fast here, past the half, or excuse me, past the half hour mark. And at this point, Rivkin's going to need to just keep that pace up and hope that Mayfield is the one that makes the little mistakes because the lead has now grown to 1.7 seconds. Both drivers just put in their new fast laps of the race, 29.669 for Mayfield, and the fastest lap of the event, 29.5 for Rivkin. So they're both still punched out of their minds, 33-30 into this one. And to look at them driving, they just like they're driving so good. I mean, just ripping off perfect laps, lap after lap after lap. And what's interesting is they nailed their setup because even in the qualifying, a lot of their laps were 30-second lap times. Yeah. And they're clicking off multiple 29s here. And both of them, 29-9 for Mayfield last lap, 29-8 for Rivkin, making up about seven hundredths of a second. As we pick up pick up here with the battle for the fourth spot, Cavalry and Testament, who are not far behind uh, Tebow. So this is a three-way battle, actually, for the fourth position. Three of the most uh, the most winningest drivers in RC history battling for not even a podium spot here in the eight-scale truck class at the Roar Fuel Off-Road Nationals. Tebow sent, almost sent it in on Cavallari. Had to stomp on the brakes and not make that worse. I'm sorry, that was Tessman. Tebow right in front of them, and that's for the battle for fifth, sixth, and, oh, yeah, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh, yeah. Tessman tried to jump over Cavallari, and he finally goes by. Cavallari went wide and let him go. They are 23 seconds behind Ryan Lutz for third. Uh, so this is really a battle to see who can be up front if something were to happen to the podium uh, finishers. But with 10 minutes left to go, can't imagine they're going to be cutting off uh, two seconds every minute. New fast lap of the race for Spencer Rifkin, 29.439. Made up almost three-tenths that last lap. Cut the lead down to just uh -oh, one who's second. who's that? Ah! Uh, Spencer, Spencer Rivkin, Rivkin is out. off the track. His, they're carrying his truck right there. Oh, my goodness. Wow. No good. Bad. Oh, man, that sucks. He was within a second of the lead, flaming out through the magnet turn. He was. That was not a fuel issue. He shouldn't have needed to pit for about another two minutes and ten seconds, unless, of course, there was a problem in the pit stop. 
But just as we were just now talking about, that battle for fourth between Tessman Cavalry and Tebow was a battle to see who could be in position should something happen to the top three, and that's exactly what happened. Yep, battle for podium spot. You're on track with your leader, the man on a mission here in both classes. But in this race, he's been the leader since the very get-go. Ryan Mayfield, he was your top qualifier here. He's just had a dominating performance and uh, I've been going in the pits and stuff. He's serious. He just is. He's doing his own thing. He's serious about what he's doing. Him and Kevin uh, Gahan have their heads down, working together in the pits there. Rivkin back out on the track. He's dropped all the way to six at the moment. Mayfield now a 25.8 second lead on Ryan wow. Lutz. Wow. Another 15.8 from Lutz back to Tessman. Cavalieri is within 1.2, though, of Tessman in a battle for the third position. So we've still got a battle going for a podium spot. There's Tessman, got Cavalieri behind him. Jared Tebow in fifth. Six spot Rivkin now, Dakota Fenn seventh. Born Horse eighth. I wonder what happened to his truck back there. Can't, I have no idea. It was a strange, uh, weird flame out. Should not have, uh, I mean, no rocks on the track. There, There's no jump back there in the magnet turn, so it's not like he smacked anything weird and you know, hit the flywheel, just a fluke flame out maybe. We just sent our pit spy, Tater Sun, Sun Tag, out there to find out what happened to Rivkin Struck, if he can get some info. They shouldn't deny a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Great strategy. Yeah, we got him back on the track, Spencer Rivkin. And we are watching right there. That is Ty Tessman in the third spot. Cavalieri right behind him. That's the battle for third. With 7.45 left to go. It's been a dominating performance from TLR. Uh, driver Ryan Mayfield with his Reds Racing Power, J Concepts Tires, Sidewinder Fuel. Steven Hartson is now flamed out, we just heard. Something's yeah. wrong with Jared Tebow's truck right there. He goes wide. Uh -oh. He's not even touching the gas. Oh, man. So Tebow, actually, he's back to seventh. His last lap was a 41.295, so he's limping it around the track at the moment. Mayfield in and Mayfield out of the pits. His that should final be his stop. Yep, his last pit stop. Now just his job to bring her home. Tebow walking off the driver's stand. Unfortunate luck for Jared Tebow. You are watching the Truggy final here. It's Mayfield, your leader, Lutz second, Tessman third, Cavalieri fourth, Rivkin fifth after a flame out. Tessman's flamed out twice, and he's in third. Rivkin's flamed out, and Tessman just flamed out again after okay. he worked his way back up to third. And pit, uh, our pit spy, Tater, said that the associated crew told him that Rivkin had flipped over back in that magnet turn back there, and they thought maybe something, a fluke had happened because when it flipped over, they heard the engine cut out. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, That's interesting. That's odd. Ryan Mayfield, your leader, second spot, Ryan Lutz. It's Cavalieri up to third, Tessman fourth after a flameout, Rivkin fifth after a flameout. He was starting to reel in his longtime friend, and uh, Ryan Mayfield, He was the gap was only one second or less than a second there for a while. Mayfield hold is cool and is calm. Mayfield has just been on fire out here, coming down to 550 left to go. There's still a lot of racing left. Believe it or not, 550 don't mean you have anything wrapped up yet, but I believe, man, the best for Ryan Mayfield after the performance this weekend. He's out front, Lutz second, Cavalieri third. And he's working on getting halfway toward that a uh, perfect repeat of what Tessman did last year. That's true. Seven out of eight qualifying rounds. He's led every lap so far, this Truggy main. He's getting there. And there he is. It doesn't take long when you're looking at the chat rooms of how many people like Ryan Mayfield. He's just a good dude. He gets why he's here. He's uh, really great to the people that ask him for help. He's really patient. He's a really intense competitor, so sometimes... You know, that can be a little intimidating, but he's a really nice guy when, you know, he, he's got the time to focus and, yeah, it's awesome watching him do so well. He and I are the, pretty much the same age, so he used to come out with Billy Fisher a lot and race out in Southern California. Got to know him and Billy really well. And it's... Uh, he's just a fierce competitor, yeah. man. When you race with Ryan Mayfield, it is just... Uh, 
Man, and especially back in the day when the Truggies were first getting developed, man, it was just, I mean, I was his competitor, but he was just phenomenal to watch drive one of those trucks. He's strapped. He won his first uh, in-scale truck national championship when he was racing for Associated, but they didn't yet have a truck, so he was actually driving a Kyosho truck. And then he won two titles with the Associated Truck looking for They're going to come in here. one more time just to make it safe. Good call. He's got such a big lead. Let's put some more fuel in. Make sure you make it to the finish. So pit spy Tater Suntag running in here. Apparently Tebow lost the front drivetrain. Uh, so that's ah. what dropped him out of the race. And then uh, Stephen Hartson had flamed out. Got back out on the track, and the next lap, one of his diffs blew up. Gotcha. So that's what knocked him out of the race. Well, you're watching your leader, Ryan Mayfield. He's been dominating so far. Just to ensure the fact that he goes the distance, he's got a 22-second lead over Ryan Lutz. Cavalier in third, Tessman fourth, Spencer Rivkin fifth, Dakota Fenn sixth, Joe Bornhorst seventh, Mike Tree eighth, Tanner Seas ninth, Alex uh, Kosciusek is 10th, Adam Drake 11th, Billy Fisher 12th at the moment. Hartson, Tebow, and Danny off the track. And Spencer Rivkin is flamed out for an again, so potentially losing that top five finish. Uh, Dakota was 15 seconds behind, but if Spencer's going to lose that lap, it's going to move Dakota up in the top five, and you see that reflected now in the scoring. Tough break for Rivkin, uh, the only driver who had anything for Mayfield in qualifying, but luck not going his way here in the final. Yeah, that sucks. But it doesn't suck for Ryan Mayfield. Not that he <laughs> wants it that way, but it doesn't suck for Mayfield. Out in front right now. He's just been clicking off lap after lap after lap. Look at that. We're towards the end of the race at 29.9. On fire out here. His stuff has just been great right from the time they, well, from the time we showed up. But uh, Mayfield right there gets a little bit close to the curb no big deal he's got 228 to go a 17 second lead over lutz cavalieri is 39 seconds back from mayfield so he's over a lap down and you might be looking at your new roar national champion in the truggy division for 2016 with 213 left to go we're on track with mayfield no battle for position right now. Uh, Cavalieri is 5.7 seconds ahead of Tessman for the podium spot. Tessman's flamed out three times in pit lane at the moment. Not sure that's very uncharacteristic of what's going on with their engine program. And following Team Losi Racing driver Ryan Mayfield on his last few laps. Red's racing power working flawless all weekend. He's been super happy with his engine program the last few races. Uh, Sidewinder fuel, J Concepts tires, and, uh, you know, everybody's been kind of saying they think that uh, their drivers have an, uh, an, a little bit of an advantage out here at this race. They've got something dialed in for this track surface, and, uh, you know, kudos to the J Concepts crew getting it done right there, and you could see the proof it's been made him was Spencer Rivkin throughout uh, part of the race, but Mayfield has been dominating here. He couldn't be shaken out in front with one minute to go. He'll come by the loop for two more times, I believe. Lutz second, Cavalieri third, Tessman fourth, Dakota Fenn fifth, Born Horse sixth, Rivkin seventh at the moment, Truies eighth, Tanner Seas ninth, Alex K tenth, Drake eleventh, Fisher twelfth, Tebow Hartson and Denny are all off the track. You're going to want to stay tuned right after this. There's Ryan Mayfield as we watch him do his last couple of laps. He's going to get by for one more with 30 seconds remaining on the clock. There's Rivkin right next to him, and Tessman. Ryan, super focused. Nice, cool, calm, and collected. And he's on his victory lap right now. Ryan Mayfield, excellent job. He's going to be coming by on his last lap. I'm not sure where Lutz is on the track. He will not make a by for his uh, – he's going to get caught at the tone. That is going to be time. You are looking at your 2016 Ryan Mayfield, Team Losi Racing, Reds Racing, uh, J Concepts Tire, Sidewinder Fuel. Here he comes. Congratulations.
Ty Tessman's already done in the fourth spot. Ryan Cavalieri will get done with third. Dakota Fenn looks like he'll be fifth. Brent Thelke congratulating Mayfield, too, as he comes by. Fantastic job. We'll run through the order real fast. It's Mayfield, Lutz, Cavalieri, Tessman, Fend fifth, Bornhorst sixth, Rivkin seventh, Truy eighth, Steez ninth, Alex K tenth, Adam Drake eleventh, Billy Fisher twelfth. Then it goes to Tebow, Hartson, and Denny. We're going to go down to our live pit report right now with our newly crowned national champion with Aaron Waldron in the pits with our J Concept pit report. Coming to you in just a second here. Yeah, with the top three finishers from the Roar 1 8 scale truck national championship.